Hi, this is the man from Modesto. Uh, most of you who know me know that um, I speak to the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit speaks to me, and tells me events that are going to happen on the national, international scale, in my personal life as well. Uh, but today I have something very interesting. Uh, the Holy Spirit actually showed me a proof to determine if the universe is expanding or not. Uh, it's a very simple proof. Uh, most good proofs uh, throughout history have always really been kind of simple. And when people look at it, you'll hear people make comments like, why did no one ever think of that before? Well, this is one of those. And basically it goes like this. Okay, now, starting with the supposition that there was some initial kind of a big bang and the universe all began to expand from that point. We'll call this origin um, O, right? Just for standard mathematical usage, right? So, just call that O. And now, so at point O, there was some explosion and all matter began to expand away from this point. So, according to the law of conservation of momentum, if you added up the momentum, the mass times the vector or whatever, of everything, it would all add up to zero. It would all add up to zero. All right, so everything moving that way, all the vectors of every particle mass in the universe moving that way, plus all the vectors moving that way uh, would add up to zero. Now, just for conversational purposes, uh, I'm just going to call the general direction of away from point O, be it up, down, left, right, center, this way, not center, but any direction, uh, any combination of three directions, uh, we're just going to call that alpha, an alpha direction away from point O. Okay, now, let's look at the Earth. So the Earth is moving around in a plane. Now, as best we can, we'll fit a line from point O through uh, that. It may not pass right exactly through that plane, but uh, let's take some component of that, right? Whatever vector you could break down, if you pass that through the, through the Earth, or through the center of the plane of the circumnavigation of the Earth around the Sun, and then you projected a vector onto there, and we'll just call that... Um, the uh, alpha component of the uh, vector of the Earth through the plane of the Earth through the galaxy. Something like that, right? So basically, the Earth is moving uh, on its trajectory, uh, the solar system is moving on its trajectory away from point O, and there is some component that is in this alpha direction, away from point O. Okay, so we're going to use that direction as the basis for comparison. Now, so let's say that um, if we project using a projection that the portion of the Earth on its axis uh, moving in this direction, we'll say that that portion, we're just going to uh, define it as 300 units. I don't know what it really is, but let's just say it's 300. Let's just say it's moving like this, right? So the Earth is moving along, along the plane the vector, the component in the plane of the Earth moving is 300. And let's just say that the Earth is moving at 20. I don't know what these rates really are, and I don't think anybody knows, but let's just use those numbers. Okay, so we got 300, and then we got 20. So now, when the Earth is moving uh, away from, on the, on the portion of its path where it's moving, on that half where it's moving away from the Earth, it's going to be at 320, right? So right here at whatever, 270 degrees, right? It's going to be at moving 320 away, okay? So, and then when it's moving over here, its component, 20, is going to be subtracted from 300, so it's going to be moving at 280, right? In the alpha direction. It's moving at 280 in the alpha direction, but around the sun, it's moving its 20, okay? So, what that means is that when it's over here at 270, it's basically, okay, and also we have to state that all matter, all the other matter, in our section of the universe is moving around uh, at perfect unity, right? If you summed up in the local section, ignoring the alpha direction, right? Uh, justifying for the alpha direction, subtracting that out, everything else in the local region should add up to zero in all directions, right? But since the Earth is moving around, uh, it's going to hit more meteors moving this way counter to the alpha direction, back toward the point of origin, it's going to hit more meteors. Because everything moving this way will be able to catch up to it. And on the other hand, when it's over here at 270 degrees, it's going to be escaping some. 
The difference might be small, right? I haven't like worked in equations for it, but it's a very simple idea, and this is just what the Holy Spirit showed me. That as it moves around, according to its movement through the cosmos, or whatever you want to call it, it's going to hit more meteors in one direction, if the universe is expanding. The Holy Spirit didn't tell me if it is or not. He said, that's a proof. And so, uh, I don't know why he shared with that. He shared that with me uh, just right now, but there it is. Uh, it's been on my mind for a couple days to share that. Simple proof. Uh, when the earth is moving in the direction that's away from some point of, point of origin, it will hit fewer meteors. And when it's moving back toward that, of course you have to break down the vector components, when it's moving back toward that, then it's going to hit more. Just because of the relative velocity to the general direction of the earth. There might be some other relationship. I don't know how the plane of the orbit of the earth is oriented compared to all the other motion in the galaxy, right? I didn't, somebody might think they know, I don't know. But if you did a careful study and were able to quantify and record uh, all the data, at least for a certain region, at least for one region, then you'd have something to look at and you'd be able to make a, a call on that. So there it is, a simple proof. This is the man from Modesto. I remind you as always to pray or be defeated. The Holy Spirit doesn't only know the rise and fall of nations. The Holy Spirit knows everything about everything that exists in the world, in the cosmos, physics. Uh, Isaac Newton, he wrote three times as much about God as he ever wrote about math and the sciences. And he, it is well known that he is the most prolific producer, the greatest contributor to the sciences in math. And Isaac Newton loved God. So there's no question that God can bless you, uh, whatever your career path is. There's no conflict between uh, science and loving God. There's just absolutely not. Uh, anyone who says that just lacks understanding on this issue. This is the man from Modesto. Pray or be defeated.